This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. In the first lecture, I went through the valuation of equity and the dividend valuation formula. In this lecture, I'm going to look at the valuation of debt. Uh, and the principle is exactly the same, that in theory, the market value of debt is equal to the present value of future expected receipts discounted at the investor's required rate of return. Um, so the same principle uh, as for equity, exactly the same, same logic, except that, of course, uh, debt lending, debt lenders aren't getting dividends, they're getting the interest instead. Uh, and how we uh, work out the value depends on whether it's irredeemable or redeemable debt. So first of all, irredeemable. Now, I mentioned irredeemable before. Irredeemable debt uh, doesn't occur much in real life, but it does in exams. Irredeemable debt is when the debt is never repaid. Um, the, the company will pay interest um, each year forever. They'll never actually repay the money. And so look at example eight uh, in the notes. Example eight. P, uh, PLC has in issue uh, 500,000 10% irredeemable debentures. Uh, and so 10% is the coupon rate. Uh, the company is paying out 10% uh, of 500,000 in interest each year. They're irredeemable, so it's never repayable. Uh, we're looking at it from the investor's point of view, and of course, when the debt was first issued, the company agreed to pay 10% on nominal. But if you're thinking of buying the debt today on the stock exchange, the amount you're prepared to pay will be whatever makes the return, uh, the, the, the interest each year, equal to the 8% you currently require. And so I can write this as a formula in a second. Um, using the, the basic principle, uh, on $100 nominal, and usually we calculate the value of one certificate, one unit. So on $100 nominal, an investor will be receiving interest of $10 per year. If it's irredeemable, it will be $10 a year in perpetuity. Uh, the market value? It'll be the present value discounted at the investor's required return of the 8%. And so the discount factor for a perpetuity, 1 over R, 1 over 0 0.08, uh, means that the market value will be uh, 125. Uh, it's an ex-interest market value. Uh, it's assuming that interest has just been paid, and so the first interest will be in a year's time. Uh, and just as uh, with shares, always in the exam, market values are X int, unless you're specifically told different. If, um, if they were about to pay the interest, then the cum interest market value is the X interest value plus the interest about to be paid at $10, it would be 135. So exactly the same as with equity. And of course, the logic is exactly the same as equity, um, that if you can currently get 8% interest from the bank, how much would you be prepared to pay or have to pay for one unit currently of these debentures? Uh, they're giving $10 a year, 
and so you'll have to pay whatever makes the ten dollars a year eight percent. And of course, if you invest one hundred twenty-five at eight percent interest, you'd need ten dollars a year. That's what this is giving, uh, and it's perfectly practical as general interest rates go up and down. The market value of debt goes up and down. You know, just suppose for the same example, general interest rates went up to, um, let's say, 12%. Well, if general interest rates, if you get 12% from the bank, you're only be prepared to buy these uh, debentures, provided they were giving 12%. And so at 12%, $10 a year, one over the required return uh, would give a market value of 83.33. And I say that's exactly how things go in real life. That as general interest rates go up and down, the market value of debt goes up and down. Because again, if you can get 12% from the bank, you're only prepared to pay $83 for these uh, debentures because the return of $10 a, a year you'd be getting would be a 12% return on your investment. Uh, by all means, learn that as a formula, and then I've written it down. The market value is the interest, the coupon rate, divided by KD where uh, KD is the investor's required rate of return. So, you know, back to the original eight, the coupon rate, the interest on $100 nominal is 10. KD, the required return, 0 0.08. The market value, therefore, 125. Oh, I spent enough time there, but there is another example, example nine. Uh, just let's check. They've got an issue of million, 6% debentures. The required return is 12%. And so, for $100 nominal, the market value, the coupon rate, the interest, $6 a year, over the required return, KD, 12%, uh, means, is that 50, 6, 1, 2, yeah, the market might be 50 PC X int. $50 for every $100 nominal. Okay, well that's uh, irredeemable. <clears throat> However, where there's slightly more work involved is suppose it's redeemable debt. And I did remind you before, redeemable is when the debt is going to be repaid. So you get interest each year until the date of repayment, and then you'll get the repayment. And here, as you'll see, there's no formula. This one we have to do from first principles, that the market value is the present value of future expected receipts, discounted at the required rate of return. Look at example 10. Uh, are as an issue 400,000 8% debentures redeemable in five years' time at a premium of 10%? Investors require a return of 12% per year. Well, on a $100 nominal, uh, what uh, receipts would you expect? You'll expect to get interest each year. The coupon rate, 8%, so $8 a year for five years, for every year up to repayment. In addition, in five years' time, uh, there'll be the repayment. It's at a premium of 10%, and remember I did say this in an earlier chapter, if debt is repaid at a premium, it's always at a premium on the nominal value. So the nominal value is 100, a premium of 10%, will be repaid 110. So if you were thinking of buying these debentures today, those are your expected uh, receipts. 
Uh, the required return is 12%. The market value is the present value discounted at 12%. So baby discounting, we've spent enough time discounting before. Uh, the $8 a year is an annuity for five years. The five-year annuity factor at 12% is 3.605. Uh, the redemption, the ordinary present value factor for five years at 12% is 0.567. And so the present values, 8 times 3.605 is 28.84. 110 times 1567, 62, oops, 62.37. And so the total present value, the market value, Oh dear, dear, dear. Uh, 91.21. Uh, a small point, and a very obvious point. Uh, normally, uh, we're after working out the market value of one unit. So a $100 nominal would have a market value of 91.21. If they did want the total market value of all the debt in issue, the total market value, well, there's a 400,000 nominal value. The market value, 91.21 for every 100. And so the total market value of the debt in issue today would be 3648. 40. Okay, again, one more of those. So I say there is no formula, so this is quite common. Uh, no choice but to um, discount the expected receipts. So in uh, example 11, there's 7% debentures, we're dealing with in four years' time at par. So again, on a hundred dollars nominal, the interest, the coupon rate, seven dollars a year for four years until uh, redemption. The repayment this time in four years' time, well, they redeemed at par. So the repayment is at nominal value of a hundred. The market value. The present value at required return of 10%. So the annuity, the four year annuity factor uh, at 10% is 3.170. Uh, the redemption, the ordinary present value factor for four years, 10% is 0.683. And so the present values, 22.19, 68.3, total present value, 90.49 uh, for every unit. <coughs> okay, finally, Let's make it a slightly bit more interesting. Uh, still redeemable debt, but suppose it's convertible. Now I explain what we meant by convertible debt um, in an earlier chapter, when we were looking at sources of finance. Uh, it's debt where um, at the end of the period, you know, they may be converted in four years, in ten years, but at the end of the period, when it comes time for repayment, the investor has the choice of taking cash or a fixed number of shares. So let's see what would happen. Uh, if you look at uh, example 12, the company has in issue 8% debentures. Uh, 
2010, and on maturity, the debentures may be redeemed at par or converted to 20 ordinary shares in the company. And the question says, now is the end of 2007, so how many years to repayment? 2008, 2009, they'll be redeemed, repaid in three years' time. And in three years' time, well, they'll have the choice of whether uh, to take cash or to take 20 shares. And it says the share price is currently 450 and is expected to grow at 7% per annum. Well, today's market value of the debt depends on the receipts the investors are expecting. And we know what they're expecting in terms of interest. Again, for $100 nominal. Of course, they're expecting interest uh, for three years at the coupon rate, 8%, $8 per annum. The question is, what are they expecting to receive in three years' time? Now, they won't actually make the decision until three years from now, but today's market value is based on what they expect they're going to receive. And what are they going to get in three years? They'll either, or they've got the choice, so they'll either choose to take cash, and on $100 nominal, it would be cash of 100 or uh, shares, and if they choose to take shares, they'll get 20 shares at whatever the share price happens to be in three years' time. Well, at the moment, the share price is $4.50, they're expecting uh, the shares to grow by 7% per year. So multiply by 1.07 each year to grow them for three years. And so what would they expect the 20 shares to be worth? Well, 20 times $4.50 times 1.07 cubed. gives me a hundred and ten point two five. So as of today, what do they expect will happen on redemption? It'll be their choice, and so clearly they choose whichever is the higher, in this case the shares. And therefore they're expecting on redemption that they'll convert and they'll be worth 110.25. And remember, if they take the shares, it'll be then up to them whether they keep them or sell them. But they currently expect it'll be worth 110.25. Uh, the market value, discount at their required return, so the present value at 10%. And now we're back to an ordinary redemption question. Uh, that the annuity factor for three years at 10% is 2.487. Uh, for the redemption, three years time, the ordinary three year factor at 10% is 0.751. And so the present value is 8 times 2.487 is 18.5. Nine zero. Uh, the conversion one hundred and ten point two five times point seven five one eighty two point eight zero. So the market value for hundred dollars nominal hundred and one point seven zero. Now two things here. Firstly, do do remember that okay, today's market value is based on what they're expecting 
as of today, that will get eight a year for three years, and then they'll get shares worth 110. But remember, that can change over time uh, because their decision about whether to take shares or cash, they won't actually make the decision until three years' time. In three years' time, they'll look to see what has happened. Maybe the shares are worth more and they take shares. Maybe the shares are worth less and they take cash. It's simply that today's market value is based on today's expectations. Uh, secondly, you'll see the question uh, asks, what is the current market value? And there it is. It also asks for something called the conversion premium. Which isn't asked often in the exam, I can only remember it being asked twice, but it could be asked any time. The conversion premium today is defined as being the current market value of the debt, which we've just calculated is 101 at 70. less today's market value of the shares they would get. The current market value of the shares that they get on conversion. Well, how many shares would they get if they converted? It's 20. And what's the current market value? It's $4.50. And therefore, the current market value of the shares is 90. Obviously, they're not converting today at all. They wait three years, they'll get interest. As things stand, they think they will convert and get more. But the conversion premium today is the difference. Which is 90. $11.70 per $100 nominal, but there we are. Okay, so that's the end of that type of evaluation of securities. Uh, one thing that may have occurred to you is how do we know the shareholders required return when we did equity? How do we know uh, what return debt lenders require when we're doing market value of debt? Well, in this type of question, we're given it, but we'll talk later about what determines the rate of return investors require. That's a later bit of the syllabus.